part of the experience of being an LCS fan is knowing that at some point in time, your fan base is going to implode, whether it's because of bad world results, whether it's because of roster changes, something's going to happen and your region's just going to go on full spiral negativity. Things are just going to get out of hand and one fan base in particular is always going to be a little bit more peeved than the other. But normally that happens after worlds. This year, it happened beforehand. Let's take a step back. Two weeks ago, Cloud9 loses to NRG in the finals of the LCS. The first time that Cloud9 has not won the title since summer of 2022 when they lost in, I think, the fourth place match to Evil Geniuses. So it's been a bit. After that year, fans got upset, Summit left, they made some roster changes, some decisions were made, they swap it up, and all of a sudden they win three titles. So now C9 loses, and fans are out for heads again. The problem is that we have worlds upcoming still, so C9 fans imploding early just feels odd, as noted by Peter Dunn, who called out, you guys kind of have a ton of accomplishments, why you're going out of your mind on this one is kind of beyond me. But the problem is the expectation is there for the fans. C9 fans are used to whenever things go wrong, whenever you don't win a title, you change. Because Cloud9 over the last few years, or at least since 2020 when they started winning titles again, has always been, if we don't win a title, we're gonna make a change. Jack's been pretty consistent on that. So fans are expecting the same thing, which is why rumors about Jojo Pune joining, or at least C9 fans wanting Jojo Pune to join, kicked up, which then started leading into MNS hate and a bunch of other rather negative side effects. This came to a head as Carver Fisher sat down and interviewed MNS, and he talked about struggling with some sort of mental block at LCS finals. The issue with this statement is that it doesn't check out. Eminez has notably had a fall off since Spring Split. Many people, myself included, thought that Eminez actually had a chance at MVP had he played the entire split. Because if you recall correctly, he came in halfway, subbed in for Diplex as they were playing him at the beginning of the year, swapped him out, and he went on a tear through the rest of the regular season. Unfortunately in summer though, he fell off pretty hard, and his performance was not all that good. To say that he just collapsed in finals and had some sort of mental issue there? No. He's had it all split. So fans, understandably, based on their track record and based on statements here, just saying, yeah, you know, maybe it's time for him to go. And the C9 cycle of, you know, flushing out one or two players each and every year is bound to continue. You can't blame fans, you gotta blame Jack, you gotta blame the management that got them used to this cycle of this happening. It, the precedent's there, you can't be pissed off at fans for that. But, what I can be pissed off at fans for is their attitude going into Worlds, because it's just annoying. Let me take it back to last year with Fudge after they won the title in summer. So what are your thoughts? Um... <laughs> if I'm being honest, I don't really think any other NA team will perform well at Worlds. Um, C9, as it always has been, will be the best team from the NA. hope is always. And they will, uh, we will be the Hopium, and we're going to try to fulfill that Hopium, I guess. Worlds is here in North America. Of That's course. pretty dope. This comment doesn't come out of nowhere. If you've only watched League from 2019 on, Quite frankly, you are not used to North America doing well at Worlds. And by well, I mean just making it out of group stage. I'm not saying winning. We've never done that. We're probably never going to, or at least it's going to be an extended period of time until that happens. No, I just mean getting out of group stage and being semi-competitive in that quarterfinal matchup to try and get out just something. And since the start of the LCS, since we started sending teams to Worlds, Cloud9 has historically been the only team that has ever consistently done it. I think there was only one year whenever C9 didn't make it from like the modern era of League up until uh, 2019. So yeah, they were just the team that we always kind of fell back on. The problem is this turned into a very toxic narrative that C9 players, C9 fans, some C9 staff, and many others adopted of, yeah, we just ultimately are the last hope of North America. It was a running joke for a while, and when they weren't winning titles, it was like, okay, sure, we, we can fall back on Cloud9, and they'll perform decently at Worlds, and it just is what it is, but they weren't winning titles. That became a problem once they were. Our top seeds in North America have never historically done well. It's just a pattern that keeps happening for whatever reason. And it didn't stop happening after C9 won their titles and after C9 became the unanimous like top organization in the LCS from 2020 on. But when you build up this expectation with people that yeah, we're the last hope and then you don't deliver, 
it becomes a problem. It becomes even more of a problem going back to Fudge's statement whenever you're downplaying everybody else around you. It's one thing to say that, yeah, we're the final hope, it is what it is. It's another thing to say, nobody else in our region stands a chance. You're punching down. You're putting everybody else down for no reason and separating the fan base more than we already are. Because when we go to these international tournaments, you would think that we should be on the same page. Let me throw you back to the vitality speech from Yamato Cannon. Europe and teams in general, it was always this chase. There was this chase about catching up to Korea, catching up to China, always trying to learn from them. But something that I've realized is that, you know, the inspiration that everyone got from Misfits, that five game series where they did their own thing, they came in with their own idea and they showed up big time. That was my philosophy coming into this year all around. We brought our own flair and G2, when they showed up in their style, they're winning. When Fnatic are doing their style, they're winning. Just stay true to yourselves. Do not try to chase anyone. Don't try to copy anyone. Just be confident. Don't limit yourselves either. Go into this tournament, play your next games, believing that you can fucking win everything. That is the mentality you need to have to conquer the best. Because anything is possible if you just believe and play with confidence and stay true to yourselves. So do that for me, Europe. Please. His entire speech was about unity for Europe. You have division over there, arguably greater than what we have in the LCS. Fnatic and G2 hate each other more than TSM and Cloud9 ever have and ever will. But yet, whenever European teams get to Worlds and get on that stage, it's Europe over everything, at least from what you see on social media. It seems like they're backing each other way more than we do here in North America. It's that unified front that Yamato preached, and it's just part of like European football culture for whatever reason that we just don't have here, barring college football. But even then, it's not like we don't have it in America. You see it with the World Cup and sports that we're not great at, but when it comes to the Olympics, it's like, you know, the red, white, and blue meme. Man, I hate this country sometimes, bro. I can't fucking stand Red, white, and blue, motherfucker! These colors don't run, bitch! USA! 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 But because Cloud9 fans and players had the sentiment of screw everybody else, it became impossible to try and preach that narrative of North American unity whenever the guy at the top's just saying, nope, fuck you. And here's the thing, I don't fully blame Cloud9 fans because at the end of the day, they weren't the top seeds for the longest period of time, they were picking up scraps and still getting wins. It was kind of a funny meme, but like now, the onus is purely on the players and on the teams to try and push this message of unity. Fans are more divided than they ever have been in the LCS. We can't decide what teams we like, what owners we like. Like fans are just going at each other from all sides. And it's like, world should be the one spot where we're able to pull everybody together and just say, hey, all of us, you know what? We had our differences and you can still pull for your teams whenever they're playing, sure. But when an LCS team gets on that goddamn stage, we are repping them and that is all that matters. But that doesn't happen, at least not vocally. Like, people will be like, oh yeah, LCS, but there's no like, RAW! <laughs> Freaking the hell out over any time North America plays. Because yeah, we are the underdogs at this point, and whether people like that or not, we are. So accept it. When you preach that you're the last chance for this region, and then you do this, You are the problem, not everybody else, you. You are leading that narrative. You had the bully pulpit for the longest period of time, or at least recently, and you did nothing to help the narrative. So here's my challenge to not only Cloud9, but NRG now has that podium as they're on top of the standings and they hold that pulpit. Preach some unity. The broadcast can't be the ones to do it because if you didn't realize, they already do, but it's not effective which is the first time in world history that North America is taking a best of series versus Europe. Incredible, huh. congratulations. 
Over the past few years, the broadcast has become less and less important in terms of fan sentiment. They try and drive the stories, but ultimately, it's co-streamers, the players, and the teams that make it interesting. They're the personalities that drive a lot. And when there's not as much narrative coming from the players and the co-streamers, or at least the ones at the top, aren't necessarily negative on the LCS, but we don't have anybody other than Degon really preaching this NA unity. It's definitely not coming from Dom or LS or anybody else. Like they're not going to be the ones like sitting here and just like unbelievably hyping up NA just because it's freaking NA. There's not that there's not that love and dedication there, and there just simply never will be. You need people that can sit here and say, yeah. We are underdogs. We probably won't get out, but that doesn't mean we necessarily suck. It means that we're going to go into this and just play the underdog story and try and come out on top. And you know what? We're still going to rep the flag, whether it's U.S., Canada, or whatever it's going to be. Teams need to be more, I guess, put in more of an effort when it comes to jerseys and like representing that, yes, we are North America. It's not just about Cloud9 or NRG or Golden Guardians or anybody else. Like We are North America when we get on that stage. The best way I guess I would liken it is this. When you see people go to the Olympics to represent their specific country, the way they represent them in terms of like the apparel and what they wear is always gonna be different. A swimmer can't wear the same thing that track and field's gonna wear, that basketball's gonna wear, but there's always this underlying theme that like, yeah, I can have a basketball jersey and a swimsuit, but they're both USA themed. So you can have a Cloud9 jersey and a Golden Guardians jersey and make them unique in your own way, but make them North American themed when we go to Worlds. So to pull this all together, to the Cloud9 fans that are crumbling right now, talking about roster changes and roster moves, you're not done yet with the year. Wait. You want to have those discussions when you're eliminated from Worlds? Fine. But also, cut off the narrative that, oh, we are once again North America's only hope. Well, I can't even say cut it off because I haven't seen it. You guys have been abnormally quiet about the international stage this year. I get it because you probably don't have hype, but who gives a crap? Do you think I felt good as a 100 Thieves fan last year when we got screwed and just absolutely bodied in that final by you guys? Do you think that I felt good going into Worlds? No, I didn't, but I still got down there, I was still repping the flag, still wearing my 100 Thieves shit at all times, and being loud about it. And that's what you need to be. So stop your complaining about roster changes, roster moves, and your players. These are the five guys that you have going into Worlds. Rep them. Be loud. Be obnoxious. Understand the position that we're in as clear underdogs as a region. But go into this and have some fucking NA pride. Please. I'm going to do my part, as I always do. Believe me, I'm on the record last year saying one of the dumbest statements possible. My take is that all three North American teams are going to make it out of groups. If you, At the end of the day, when a North American team is on stage, we as fans have an obligation to aim for the stars, even if we're only going to land on the moon or hell, not even get off the ground. It does not matter. It, let me ask you this. When you played at any Worlds or MSI, did you go in with the expectation that you could win it, even if you knew in the back of your mind that you couldn't? Well, I mean, yeah. Of course. So why would we not have that same expectation as fans? Why are we not held to the same standard to expect the most out of our teams, to cheer them on in the hopes that that's going to happen, even if it's not? <laughs> Um, <laughs> but I would do it all again. I wouldn't change a goddamn thing. So can somebody else please join me on this freaking hill and support North America till we goddamn die? That's all I ask. To the LCS, to Riot, work with the teams to put out some merch or like a jacket that has like all four teams on it, like that represents us when we go to Worlds. Think of like opening ceremony, how Ralph Lauren sponsors the United States and like has this US apparel, do something like that. It doesn't have to be much. It just has to be like one or two items, but like something that we can have. Teams, get on the same page in terms of content. Collaborate together on content while you're there. I know you're going to be practicing for your own shit, but everything's region locked, so you're not going to be playing against each other for a bit, so do some content while you're there. Like, do something. We cannot afford for our teams to go and have a similar performance to last year and have nothing to show for it. No content, no storylines, no nothing. Because then, what Cloud9 fans are doing right now is just gonna continue. So please, everybody, step up the regional pride. 
just a little bit. That's all I ask. No good way to end this. Just cut it to the outro.